Man, oh man, the legend, the icon, the Hendrix. That's what we're talking about today. I got into Hendrix much later in my playing, but as soon as I like, really dove into his playing, there's so many things that I just kind of quickly stole and wanted to incorporate into my own playing. So that's what we're doing today. It's simple, powerful ideas that come from Hendrix. You can snag the tabs down below. I'll also have them in the video for you guys. And yo, let's just get into it. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, now before we get too far into this lesson, I do wanna throw it out there. I am tuned a half step down. Kinda of just feel like that's part of the Hendrix sound. I got kind of a fuzzy tone going on here. I'm not really chasing you know, Hendrix sound too much here, but definitely in that vein. So the first lick here, like I said, everything tuned down half step is what I've, I don't know if there's an actual name for it, but I always call it falling bends. And Hendrix was really the first guy I ever heard doing this. And I instantly was like, yo, that's cool. I want to steal that and I did. So there's actually two different ways to play this lick. I'm going like that. You could do it all just in one position. Out of box one, you can do all of it. But what I don't like about that one is it misses this slide. There's this quick slide up that you have to do when you do it in a, you know, kind of box four down here that you have to do to get back up to box one. So I like this little kind of jump to it more, but you can, you know, play this other places. But what he would do is this, is you kind of bend up on one string, take the other string with you, and then release the other bend and fall back down on the other bend. It's, it's basically like a pre-bend is really what's happening. You're pre-bending the string above and grabbing it and writing that note down. So it's, it's, it's just such a cool Hendrix thing. So I'm gonna start on 10 here. It's all out of E minor pentatonic. So what I'm doing is I'm bending 10 up on the high E string up to 12th fret. So it's like a full step bend. Okay, now what, when I'm here, notice how I took that B string with me. Yeah, I took it along for the ride. Now what you have to do is you have to get used to rolling over, but mid bend. So this is where the challenging part is. Okay. Now what happened is I went to 10th uh, fret on the B string and I played that one and I wrote that note down. What you really have to do, the trickiest part of this whole thing is when you release the high E string note, you don't want it to go, you know, that. You have to figure out how to do that. So I'm muting that with the kind of the flesh of the bottom of my index finger. So when I bend it, notice how I, but you don't hear that you don't hear that string really go anywhere because I'm already playing another note so that note kind of overpowers that dead string sound but I'm adding it uh, the muting of my index finger on there okay now I go back to eight on the B okay and I kind of do the same thing here. I slide up to box one now. So I'm gonna slide, and this is where I, like I said, I like this position shift, because you get this big buildup of the note. That right there. Okay, so I'm bending 14 on the G up. Same idea. I take the D string with me, and I hop over to it. Okay, and I kind of grab it. It's, it's not as uh, dramatic of a fall this time, but it's still there. Okay. Then I go to 12 on the G, so. <laughs> Don't do that, look, I did it. But that right there, you, you will find yourself incorporating that all the time. It can add so much attitude. Like I said, Hendrix is the guy who I heard doing this. So start with that one. All right, next is Hendrix's sliding chords. You know, I, I always talk about, and I've seen other videos talk about Hendrix using his thumb over the neck, which is what I'm talking about here, but it's usually in this very double stop way. You know, then you go to another chord. And you can do all that stuff. That That is, you know, quintessential Hendrixing right there. But what we're gonna do is talk about his sliding chords. And the, the one example I wanna take from his Little Wing, you know, everyone, you know, Everyone in the world knows Little Wing. But let's kind of like transform these chords a little bit and figure out exactly what we're playing. So instead of doing a normal kind of like major chord like this, Hendrix a lot of times does it like this. 
And there's a lot of versatility and variety that you can add by using your thumb over the neck. So to take this chord that is from Hendrix, uh, like from Little Wing, is fifth fret on the low E string. Now that is with your thumb. Okay, so then you're gonna go to seventh fret on the D, sixth fret on the G, fifth fret on the B, and then seventh fret on the high E string. Okay, you've, you've definitely heard that Hendrix played this chord before. He does it a lot. It's the same thing when he goes, when he does that, it's, he's basically doing this chord, which is actually an add nine chord. You have your major, and you're adding your ninth up top there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it down one step at a time, so, okay, you slide down, you go down to the F. Now, what I wanted to kinda like throw in here, cause that's what Hendrix is doing a lot. He's sliding this shape around. Is you can use it all over the place. Because the shape doesn't change when you slide down to three. It's just three, five, four, three, and then five, which now this is a G add nine, F add nine, okay? Well, what if we change those chords a little bit? Because he uses those chords a lot, and you can do your basic major chords, but let's change it to like a sus two. I think it's what I tabbed out for you here. So I'm holding on fifth fret now, and I'm gonna go to seventh fret on the D, fourth fret on the G, and then fifth fret on the B. Okay? So you have this happening, and you can add. I don't want to go to the next chord. Okay? Now let's slide this one down. And practice doing this just to get used to sliding shapes around. And you kind of have to slowly adapt where your hand is based on how close the frets are to each other. But again, it's just something I stole from Hendrix. And this one would be third fret on the low E string, fifth fret, second fret, third fret, and then you can have the open high E string if you want. Now when you slide down to F, it changes a little bit because we kind of run out of frets. You're going to be first fret, third fret, open G, and then first fret. I'm sure you've heard Hendrix use that couple times too. Again, we're, we're gonna avoid copyright. You know, these aren't carbon copy Hendrix things, but they're very similar and it's more about taking the idea, the concept behind them. So sliding chords, use your thumb if you can. If you can't, uh, you know, you might have to work with maybe just the higher octaves of. You know, doing stuff, but um, if you can use your thumb and practice it, Really, it helps a bunch. Now, the final one I want to throw in here is something that you might not even think about, but it was such an, an apparent thing for me, and I got it straight from Hendrix, is what I call the slow bend. And what I mean by that is, you know, he always, he has a, a note, and he'll ride the note up real high and he'll sometimes he'll just let it fall down even though it's almost like it's chromatically falling down but it's such a cool sound you know you'll hear Hendrix uh, you know he'll, he'll do those big crazy bends I'm gonna do one I remember in uh, Voodoo Child obviously he'll, he does that when I first heard that I didn't know what he was doing I was like is he like picking the strings or something crazy you know it, it was just such a cool sound but he's holding up that bend and he'll let the bend fall a lot of times players, myself included, uh, until I got it from Hendrix, was I always bent to the note. And then a lot of times you either you don't hear the note come down or you come down really quickly and you're on to the neck, you know, like a. <laughs> stuff like that. Hendrix will ride the bend out. <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. So the example I have here is. so simple but just it can add especially if you're playing live with an amp and you can get some feedback going whoo then you're cooking then you got something so all i'm doing is thinking e minor pentatonic here i'm gonna go three and I, it's not even like a half step bend i, I think i tabbed that as a quarter step bend it's like it's just it's just a bluesy bend so you're gonna bend three on the high e string up and then you go to an open string okay an open high e string and then open b now what I like to do with this particular bend is I go to two on the G, 
And it's just a big bend, you know. It doesn't even matter. You could do a two-step bend if you want to do. But I leave these notes ringing out. I don't try to silence them. I want that fight, that clash of the notes. So. Okay. No, don't do that one. And let it just, just ride the bend out. You know, go wherever you want with it. But it just sounds so cool to have that. It's simple, but it was so powerful. And I, I, every time I do those big bends, I just think of Hendrix whenever I'm doing it. But definitely want to check out. All right, gang, that is it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Sorry there haven't been lots of lessons lately. Lots going on kind of behind the scenes here. Uh, just finished shooting a guitar course. So I was kind of like burnt out on lessons, but uh, you'll see the lessons popping up more and more now. And then uh, we have one more month of the Sweet Saturdays going on. So that'll be wrapping up. And uh, I think that's gonna be it. So until next time, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you would subscribe, like I said, lots of other content on the way and some, some pretty dang big news coming up. So until then, I'll see you all later. Bye, homies. Woo!